All right, some goodies arrived for this high watt custom 50. As you can see, I've got the old caps out and the old solid wire grounds out. Uh, I've got some new grounding locations. There are already two holes in the chassis here and here. Uh, they just have them in case they use a larger transformer because for the 100 watt model. Anyway, so I put some new uh, ground mounting points here, some stainless steel hardware through these existing holes. This one with the white wire, that appears to be the shield for the power transformer. This one here with the two black wires, this one goes over here. It's about to be the negative for the reservoir cap, which is a series connection from here to here. And you can see the positive is going here. And then these two are bridged to make a 200 microfarad cap with a 220K uh, my, uh, resistor across it. The next uh, capacitor is gonna be done the same. The other black wire goes over here to the fuse holder for the HT fuse. And uh, there's an additional existing hole down here where I put another ground lug. And that is for the uh, green wire going to the IEC connector. So the IEC a safety ground has its own dedicated hardware shared by nothing else. The HT center tap and um, uh, reservoir cap ground is by itself. And then this uh, is just here for the uh, shield wire of the transformer. The uh, This blue wire, which was going to ground over here by the IEC stuff, this is the filament center tap. I'm actually gonna tape that off or connect it to one of these unused holes uh, on this PCB. And I'm gonna install some heater balance resistors later because that gives a better uh, way to dial out hum in the heater supply. And it gives protection to the uh, power transformer in case of a short. I've discussed that before in a lot of Fender videos. And I, I got this far before I went further because I wanted to show you this stuff. And when I put the next uh, cap in here, it's gonna cover a lot of that up. So this is the next cap. It's gonna be the series connection. Just gonna get that straightened out and I'll tighten up the hardware. That's not going anywhere. All right, so now this black wire, which I can't see now, though I know it's there, here it is is going to go here. And then I'll put a wire from here to here to make that series connection. So let me get this ready to do that first. All right, notice that there are no solder joints yet. These are held in place mechanically. That's held in place mechanically. That's held in place mechanically. I'm going to solder some of them and leave two unsoldered so I can do the wire from here to here, which will put these caps in series with each other. Now, I do have a decision to make. I've got these large resistors here on the board, some of these here, and they are, I could also put the resistors from here to here on the next cap, which would serve the same role. It might be better to do that just because these are kind of janky. I'm going to hold that trick back in my, in my, uh, you know, that's a trick I might possibly use. Let me get this next capacitor in place and I'll discuss what it's going to do. You can also see this was the can uh, clamp that had the really long uh, screw and that screw was actually not a pan head, so it didn't sit flush here. So I've replaced that with a, a nice pan head. These are dual hundreds. This is a dual 50 and uh, the sections are not run independently of each other on this one. Electronically, it doesn't matter if it's straight, but it drives me nuts if it's not. That's a me problem. All right, that's not going anywhere. And like I said, this resistor here, electronically, I could put it from here to here, do the same thing. I may end up doing that. We shall see. This is the wire that's going to go here. This is this, uh, the screen node. And the wire that's going to go here is currently going down the other end to the old three section cap as opposed to a two section cap. And it's coming out of the PCB here, even though the connection is gonna be down there now. So I'm gonna see if there's a point on this board that's electronically equivalent. First, I'm gonna disconnect this from this old can cap over here. It's gonna go ahead and disconnect all three of these. These two red ones, are HT4 and HT5. I'm most interested in HT3 right now. 
Come on, there you go. Sorry if I'm doing this a little bit sloppily. I can just barely see what I'm doing because where the camera is. The camera is between me and the work. Which on something super critical, I'd move the camera out of the way and, you know, the work comes first. But for deconstruction, especially since I'm probably going to be moving this wire, I have the possibility of replacing these two if I need to. I'm not too concerned about it. Let's go ahead and remove at least this uh, cap to get it out of our way right now. Bye bye. There are those grounds and the, the bus wire I was telling you about. I'm gonna snip this out right here. And right here. Making sure I'm only cutting what I want to cut. That will all be done better. And these jacks will get replaced and be easier for me to access this area to replace the jacks without this can cap here. So, and the next thing to look at is this wire here. Where is it electronically equivalent on the board where I can put a wire going to the other direction? All right, this eyelet right here is electronically equivalent. So the wire for this uh, HT3 will go there. Let me get that set up. I've got it off at this end, but I want to have that wire come out the back here and go over here, which means it's going to be running this way. And there's another wire that I'm going to be adding to make a series connection from that uh, cap, which is going to have the positive of HT2 and 3, all the way to the other side because uh, that's where the ground of that uh, series connection is going to be. And I want to do those after I... I don't want those to be in the way of my work, and I've got some things to change on this board. So I think I'm going to change this stuff on this board before I finish that filter cap wiring. Uh, it'll be neater this way. So let me get started, and uh, I will show you what I've done. This is pretty simple stuff. If I run into any unexpected gotchas, I'll, I'll jump back in and show you, but it should be pretty straightforward with the PCB. All right, everything's repopulated here. So I cleaned up a lot of flux on both sides of the board. And as you saw in the previous video, a lot of these original joints on the other side of the board were really, really bad. Those have been redone. This cap's been changed out. These two caps have been changed out. All three components here in the BIOS supply have been changed out. So it's a two watt, a new uh, diode. It's one in 4007, new 100 microfarad, uh, 100 volt cap here. Or is it 63 volts? I can't see from where I'm sitting. And the uh, 56K resistor here has been removed. And I have got a, bi a bias pot added that I'll show you in just a minute. Here you can see the three wires going to this uh, cap here, which gives us HT2 and HT3. Got the bleeder resistor there. And this red wire is going this way, which will go to the other side of the chassis for its series cap connection. And then I've got this junction here, making this series as well, that red wire. Down here, you can see I've added this bias pot like on a fender, and I've connected one wire, which goes to here. Um, the um, original resistor was just a fixed 56K resistor. I will play around with that. I'll start with the 47K and series with this 10K, and see where we end up. This red wire is coming from uh, HT2 and HT3, and we'll go to a cap here, which will be the second part of its series connection. Uh, that's no big deal. And uh, let me see, I've got the input jacks loose. I've got to got do some stuff over here, and I've got to do all these jacks here. Before I do these jacks, and before I button up in this area, I want to pull the main board out, the PCB, with all the pots on it uh, because it's it as bad as the solder joints were on the bottom of this board. I want to make sure that the bottom of this board is good, particularly all the, the pot connections because that's a, a very common thing for those pot solder joints to break. And that can really undo any good work I do anywhere else in the app. Here's the underside of the board. And most of the solder joints on the underside look like this. That's just sad. It's really hard to show on the camera because I don't have a macro lens, 
but there are little rings, little bitty cracks on most of the pot connections and a few other connections. I'm going to reflow everything. I'm not going to show everything before. It's not necessary, but that's really not a good standard. Here is the uh, bus wire that was the ground connection for this board. And this trace goes to here and there's an unused uh, pad and hole for a wire to go through. What I think I'll do to make this reassembly and future surface easy is I'll put a, a stranded wire from here going to the chassis ground and I'll run another wire from here. That'll be the ground reference for the input jacks. It'll make things a lot easier. The jacks and the board can kind of lift up as one and stay together in the future. On that note, you can see I've put the new input jacks here on the outside with some tape here. This will do two things. First of all, it holds the panel in place while I do the work so this panel doesn't flap around and potentially break because it is plastic and I wouldn't want to catch it with my arm as I'm doing work here and have this break. Second of all, having the jacks like this means I can do the new wiring on both jacks from the outside without you know working in cramped quarters and everything will have this exact same layout. And then I just flip it around, it mirrors itself inside just fine. That's why I have the tape here, so that any solder spatter here doesn't uh, affect the front panel. So I changed out these two electrolytic caps. I changed out this cap, which did not seem to be original. Reflowed all the solder joints on the back, like I mentioned. And I installed a new ground lug uh, underneath the board. That'll be for the all the preamp grounds. That'll be the input jacks. That'll be filter caps. I'm debating whether to connect the center return jacks and the speaker jacks negatives over to that same lug, which is theoretically better, especially for the send and return, or whether to do it as it was as it came in to one of the cathode points on the uh, EL34s, the output tubes. I'll probably run that wire all the way to the input. It will be better. And those uh, cathode connections on the output tubes will just be used for the output tube cathodes, which are very low current and not much of a problem. And the speaker reference to ground, as long as the connection on the output transformer secondary common, you know, the ground wire, if that thing can handle all the current going to the speakers, then the reference from the speaker jacks to the chassis uh, can be very small wire. So that could also be fine going to the output tube uh, cathodes, low current. But the send and return, that's part of the audio path, the main audio path, that would be much better done to the same point, um, same ground point on the chassis that all the stuff in the actual preamp goes to. So I will take a look at that when I'm repopulating the jacks. And I think that'll be the next order of business is uh, enlarging the holes on the rear of the chassis, like I mentioned before in the first video, and then uh, getting the new jack assembly all put together so it'll go back in here and seeing what resistors these are because these are wrapped around multiple times. I probably won't be able to reuse these resistors. We shall see, but um, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, that'll be in the next video. I think this is where we're gonna stop on this one. So as always, thanks for watching.